Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, we've had a leaf because we've had two for over four years now and it's time for a change. Those that watch or subscribe to the channel will already know that we cancelled about a month ago our Tesla first day Model 3 reservation. We simply could not afford the car and it's not an option for us. No matter how good it is, we just can't do it. So, we've been car shopping, we've done our research, we've had a look online and we've actually put a deposit down on the next car. So, what out of everything that's been out or will be coming out over the next year-ish do you think we've put a deposit down on? What will be the next EVM car for a few years? Now, when we announced that we cancelled the Model 3 reservation, I got a ton of messages from people saying, it's brilliant, do it, you won't regret it, it's worth the extra, all that sort of stuff. It, it, it's, it's basic maths. We cannot afford what, once you add the luxury tax on top of it, is a £41,000 car for the standard range plus model. It's just simply well beyond what we thought it would be, what they said it would be, what everybody kind of thought it would be. So it, it, we have to draw a line in the sand. We drew it and it's well above that line, I'm afraid. So it doesn't matter how good the car is, I still want one. We just can't afford it. So there's no point in putting in the comments, go for the Model 3 because it's worth every penny. It's only worth every penny if you have the pennies to buy it in the first place. We only have a couple of constraints in regards to the cars that we want. Definitely want a well above 200 mile real world motorway range car because we do lots of long journeys. We intend on traveling across Europe in whatever car we get next. Um, so I definitely, I, I've done my stint in short range EVs and you know, the two Leafs now, I want something that's proper long range, at least by today's standards. The other constraint is that we want it to be a family car. We go camping, we travel quite a bit, and of course, if we're going across Europe or anything like that, we want it to be a family sized car, something that can take us and a lot of uh, gear uh, anywhere we want really. So a small car won't cut it, it has to be a family sized car. Now, what I'm going to do is list all the cars that were on the consideration list, basically, almost anything that is available between now and in the next year-ish um, that is also of course cheaper than a Model 3. These are the cars that were on our list and in no particular order as well. We have the Honda E, the Renault Zoe, either the 40 or the 50 kilowatt hour one that's coming out I think start of next year-ish. The Volkswagen ID of course, the Nissan Leaf, both the 40 and the Leaf E Plus. The Peugeot E208, MG EZS. You have two Hyundais, the Ionic and the uh, Kona, of course. Two Kias, the new Kia Soul, and of course the E Nero. The BMW i3 or i3s, and of course the full electric Mini. So what I'm gonna do now is go through that list of cars, in again, in no particular order, and eliminate them one by one until we end up with the car that we're buying, the one that we've just literally put the deposit down on. Now, you can play along and pause the video now and put in the description which car out of the those that I've mentioned we are getting, or you can cheat and go to the end of the video and just and just look at that bit. Right, let's get rid of some cars now. Uh, I'll start with the top and then just randomly pick some. The Honda E. This is an easy one because not only is it very small, but the range is also surprisingly low for a 2019 released car. I think it's about 130 odd miles or something like that. that, that I know, I, I get it, it's a city car, but I expected a bit more than that. So yeah, that, that's clearly not gonna fit both constraints. So let's bin the Honda E. What's next? Uh, the Peugeot E208. Again, it's quite a small car, smaller than it looks uh, on, on, on a picture, really. I've seen it in the flesh at Fully Charged Live. Uh, and although it looked all right, it's just a standard E208, uh, a standard 208 that happens to be electric. Not big enough, the range isn't well above 200 miles, so that alone is enough, but to be honest, I don't really fancy it, it's just an other car. And let's face it, if it wasn't electric, nobody would be talking about the new 208 coming out now. Certainly not in, in the, the community, the, the people that are watching this now. It's just because it's an electric car it gets attention. Right, um, the BMW i3 or i3s. A car that I really like, especially the i3s, I think it looks brilliant. Uh, it's it's kind of like the first hot hatch, as it were, in electric car terms. Uh, but 
even though the range again doesn't really meet my criteria it is a it is a fairly long range car but of course it's way too small it's a proper four seater it's not a five seater the boot's microscopic and as good as it is engineering wise and all that it's just it wouldn't suit us at all what's next the Renault Zoe now the 40 kilowatt hour obviously is getting replaced well I assume it's been getting replaced I don't know if they're selling it alongside but we can still buy one basically or we can wait and get one of the new ones that's coming out in the next six seven eight nine months or so now that range wise will probably suit us but again it's not quite big enough it's basically a facelift of the current Zoe so size wise it's pretty much the same thing uh, it's just not big enough is it so I think that alone kind of wipes it off the off our radar as it were uh, good car my brother has literally just placed an order on one uh, but for us it's not big enough the Volkswagen ID car ID3 whatever you call it now this one in theory could suit what we're after over 200 miles yes big enough probably at least inside i just i don't know I, I, there's still there's something bugging me about that car i don't know what it is why have we not seen proper pictures of the interior why is the outside still disguised why are they not saying the exact price yet you know i, I get it they have to sort of few things out first but surely if you can put a deposit on something you should at least know what it looks like both inside and out it's not like tesla where it's coming out three years from now so i don't know what it is about that it's just bugging me i just get this sneaking suspicion it's going to be trickled out in small numbers it's going to be 30 odd thousand pounds for the, the the launch version or whatever they call it and i don't even think it's going to be that good a car if i'm honest it might be a good electric car but I think we're at the stage now where there are enough electric cars out, out there where we can concentrate on how good a car is rather than just applauding the fact it's an electric one. The fact it's an electric car is no longer unique enough to say, ooh, that's interesting. That could be a terrible car, but just because it's electric, people pay attention to it. And I've stopped doing that now. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's going to be 30 grand for the top range version, uh, long range, all that sort of stuff. But... As of a sneaking suspicion, it won't be. So the unknown certainty on that made us not pick it, really. But it was in serious consideration. It's just, I don't know, a gut feeling. Okay, the MG EZS. Interesting car, certainly big enough. Hopefully I'm going to be getting one in the not-too-distant future. But, uh, to drive, not to buy. But the range, hundred I think it's 100 and... 60 70 miles so it's very good range for what should be a decent budget ev but not not enough for me i want more and there's still a few considerations on interior quality and materials used i might be way off on that one because i'm not actually sat in one yet but the range alone is enough to, to scrap it i've just i don't know anything about the mg brand it's obviously nothing to do with the previous version it's uh, you know it's a chinese brand not necessarily a bad thing but there's uh, you know there's not like a lot of dealers to choose from i can't just go down the road like you can with most other manufacturers and and have a look i don't know again gut feeling there's something not quite right there yet but hopefully when it does come out i'll be proven wrong the hyundai ionic or ionic however the hell you pronounce it i don't really care the original one is a very good car it's very efficient still quite rare and they're bringing out a bigger battery version but not a big enough battery version for me. I don't know why they haven't done what they've done with the corner and leapt all the way up to a 60 odd kilo hour. It would be a fantastic car. Maybe they don't want to take sales away from the corner. I, I don't know, but that's probably going to be about a 180 odd mile range car. Uh, and it probably will do that. They are very efficient. Forgetting the range for a second. I think there are better cars out there as well. So uh, yes, we're not getting the Ionic, Ionic, kick, kick, whatever you pronounce it. What's next on our list? The Kia Soul. Now, the original Soul, again, meant to be a very good, efficient EV. I personally think it's one of the ugliest cars ever made. <laughs> I just think it's a very strange thing, especially from certain angles. The new one, however, the, the facelift one, I guess, I, I really like it. I think it looks brilliant, especially in that kind of lime green colour. And they're also sticking the 64 battery in it as well. So the range is going to be incredible on that car. I reckon 
280 real world miles should be quite easy over 300 around town that'll be a belter and i think it'll be in small numbers so if you are thinking about getting one get your name down immediately as soon as the reservations open up that's the only way i think you're going to end up with one and it was a serious temptation but it's just not big enough it's a small car we wouldn't be able to go across europe in it camping that sort of stuff so unfortunately no kia soul what's next the mini e or mini cooper e whatever they're, whatever they're going to call it the full electric mini ultimately the range is said to be about 140 odd miles and of course it's not a big car even the five door which is bigger than most people think it's certainly not big enough for what we need it for I also think it's going to be a bit of a token gesture by Mini in terms of electric cars. The next generation Mini that comes out, as in not a facelift, the proper next gen, I think that'll be a belter. But we're a few years off that yet, so um, no full electric Mini for us. Right, how many have we got left? We've got one, two, three cars left. We've got the E-Nero at the corner and the Nissan Leaf. So, which shall I get rid of first? Uh... Remember, this is in no particular order, so it doesn't mean that these are second or third or anything like that. But the one that I'll be binging, binning off next will be the Nissan Leaf, uh, the E Plus specifically, because that's the only one with a big enough range to suit. The car itself, I already know that it would suit you know, what we want to do with it, because obviously we've had two over the last four and a bit years. But that's part of the problem. It's effectively a car that came out nearly a decade ago that's just had a facelift. It's got no thermal battery management, even on this E Plus version still. It's not as practical as its rivals. It's not got as good a range compared to its rivals with the same sort of battery size. It's all right looking. I don't mind that. The warranty isn't as good as other rivals. And when you factor in all that, it's more expensive as well than the other two cars that are remaining. So it's worse on almost every measurable metric but it's more expensive. I wouldn't touch the Nissan Leaf E Plus. And again, I'm a massive fan of the Leaf. I've had two, I started this channel because of the Nissan Leaf. So no one can accuse me of being biased against Leaf, uh, Nissans, but I wouldn't touch that Leaf E Plus with a barge pole. I think it's, uh, it's not a bad car, but it's very bad value. Leaf stands for low emission, affordable family vehicle. Affordable? If you spec up a, a, a Nissan Leaf Tecna E Plus, like, you know, really tick the boxes, it's more than a Tesla Model 3. I mean, who would get that over a Model 3? It's just insane. So, yeah, you, you can probably guess we're not getting a Nissan Leaf. Right, so now we have two cars left the Kona or the E Nero. Both, for those that don't know, are basically the same car. They share their underpinnings and uh, I've, I've driven them both there are reviews in my channel of both cars the corner and the e-nero now those that already follow me on twitter which is at evman uk will already probably know the answer to this uh, but out of the e-nero and the corner the car that we are not getting is the corner now this was quite a close one but as i kind of said in the uh, e-nero review video same car very similar range, which is both very good range. You're talking at least 250 miles uh, in the real world on the motorway. And I, I've done that. I've proven that. Uh, 300 miles is achievable, certainly around town. So very good range. The Kona, unfortunately, it's back seats and boot, uh, noticeably quite a bit smaller than the E-Nero. So between the two, very close. Ultimately, it has to be the E-Nero. I would say that they both look as good as one another. I personally prefer the E-Nero. I think the uh, corner doesn't look bad, depending on its colour, although it does remind me of a beluga whale. And of course, both of them are pretty much fully specced. I mean, the E-Nero the e only comes in one version, at the moment at least, and it's got everything on it, which is always a plus. Uh, it's also uh, a few thousand pounds cheaper than the Nissan Leaf E+. Plus. So this is kind of what I meant with the Leaf. That has a better range, it's more practical, it's bigger, uh, it's got proper thermal battery management, it's got a much better warranty, and it's cheaper. So who the hell would be going for the Nissan Leaf E Plus? The only reason I can think of to go for, I'll say the Leaf, instead of the uh, E-Nero, or maybe even the Kona, is the availability, of course. Now, as I said at the start, time is on our side. The Leaf we've got is, is ours, there's no 
lease or finance or anything to worry about. So we can keep it as long or as short as we want to. And I'm more than happy to wait what I've been told will be about 10, 11 months. 12 tops, but in reality about 10, 11 months for the e Nero, And we have actually put a deposit down on it now. One thing of note though, is that the price is changing for the e Nero, Anywhere from 50 to 500 pounds, they reckon, who knows. Um, that's coming out uh, in July is the new price. It's, uh, yeah, it's a cracking car. We're going to get one and uh, it's probably going to be arriving uh, April, May-ish. So there we are. That's the car we're going with. Do you agree with my reasoning? I mean, it won't change anything, but, you know, would you go for the same, given the same sort of budget? I mean, this is going to be, well, the list price is 33. We don't know what the price increase is going to go up or down, presumably up. Don't know how much. So let's assume 33,000 for now. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's a lot of money for a Kia. And it's the most expensive car by a considerable margin that we've ever bought. But we can, we can do it. We just can't stretch another eight grand for the Tesla Model 3. So yeah, the Model 3 is definitely a better car than the E-Nero, but not 8,000 pounds better. And then it means we've got a bit of time. If something changes with the Model 3 between now and the end of the year, like they suddenly drop the price wildly, which won't happen, but if it did, it's a refundable deposit. I'll just re-order re the Model 3. In reality, I think what will happen and who can predict the future model car wise, um, we would probably end up keeping this three years and then either keeping it or obviously selling that and trading it in for something like maybe a Model Y, which should be definitely available or readily available three years from now. Uh, right, so there we are. That's the car, that's what we're doing. Please let me know in the comments what you think, whether or not we've done the right thing or not. Like I say, it won't make a difference, we, we're doing it, but are you in a, you know, a similar situation? Are you looking into a car and you've got a bit of time? Are you looking into a car and you don't have much time so your options are much, much narrower? We're in a bit of a limbo at the moment. People don't know what to buy and out of the ones they do want, there's the massive waiting list. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer, I guess, really. So I think for the next few years, for the foreseeable future, really, if you're wanting to get some of these, well, any EV, you're gonna know or you're going to have to know what one you want about a year before your current finance deal ends. You're really going to have to plan in advance. Well, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching as usual. Got a couple of cars that aren't on this list being reviewed over the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that one. And uh, if you want to find out what those cars are, because I'll be doing a lot of Twitter posts, follow me on Twitter at EVMANUK. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.